Welcome back to In the Mountains. Today I got a fire going, burning off some old bark and some wood scraps that were left next to the log splitter. There's a log up the road that I saw on the county road. I'm planning on uh, going and cut that up. I'm going to bring a couple chainsaws up there. I recently was gifted an old semi-rusty PV with a lift on it so that it lifts the log up to keep it out of the dirt. So I'm going to go grab that. I'm going to load the truck up. This fire is roaring here. It's got lots of wood scraps and whatnot to burn. The uh, hot tub you see back there, that goes through quite a bit of firewood. So we're just going to keep adding to the stockpile. What I'm picking up today, I mean, it's not going to get burned until next year. We've had a little bit of uh, rain mixed with snow here. Right now the snow level's falling. It's getting kind of cool. Right now it's still just rain. The hot tub's already warmed up. I'll get in that a little later tonight. Uh, haven't had a chance to use this lift PV yet. I'm hoping it works pretty good. Hope you're all doing well. Shout out to all my new subscribers. So the tools I brought with me today are the old Oshkosh PV on the right with the wood handle. The lift PV there in the center and two chainsaws there to the left, some extra gas and some bar oil. Both the PVs that I have now were gifted to me by two different older men who just can't roll logs like they used to or cut firewood. So I really appreciate them gifting these tools to me to put to use further. This lift PV I've, I've noticed already doesn't have as long of a handle, so the leverage just isn't the same as the longer Oshkosh wood handle PV. So it was a little awkward for me getting used to using this. Um, the spike on it stuck a little easier. So I'm still getting used to this here. So this log is on the side of a county road and off camera right there, or I finally get this log up in the air with the lift. There's definitely a limited area to work further to the left there. There's a steep embankment. And further down the embankment goes to the river. So I was able to get this log up in the air off the ground. I'm going to check it out and make sure there's not rocks everywhere. So free firewood is always free firewood. I'll take it. And it's easy pickings. This log, I assume, had been down for a while. And somebody else dragged it out. or Not sure who did it and took a chunk of it. I'm just getting uh, what's left. I always like to warm up my chainsaws a little bit before I open up and go full bore when bucking a log like this. That also goes for when I'm done running a saw, I like to let it idle for a little while before I shut it off. So here I am checking for rocks and debris on this log. This road is not gravel like a lot of them I encounter, so it looks pretty clean. As soon as you hit a rock or some sand or dirt, your chain is dull, and that stops you from completing the job, Then you have to either file it down or put on a different chain or switch saws. It just slows the whole thing down. But the best way to make sure that the job gets completed without major hiccups is to just keep your chain out of the dirt, out of the ground, and away from sparking on rocks and debris. I really like how this PV was able to keep this log off of the ground. Before, I probably would have thrown some dunnage underneath the log by using the other PV. This PV is a little harder to get off of the log because the spike is a lot sharper than the wooden Oshkosh PV that I have that just rolls the logs. So it was, did take some getting used to with the spike and releasing the log from the claw of the PV. But as you see, 
it does lift the log off of the ground, even on this slight slope here on the side of the road. It doesn't have the leverage of the Oshkosh, but I like the fact that it can get the log off of the ground to make it an easier work area. Even though I briefly warmed this saw up while I cleaned off the log, it takes a few bucks for it to really get into its stride as a two-cycle engine. But once it does, it really just spits out chips and bucks through these rounds with relative ease. By looking at this log, I can tell it is not fresh. It's definitely been down for a while, but also I wouldn't call it dry either because it's been in the rain too for a while. In looking at it, I can tell it's not rotten. I don't want to cut rotten wood. It just burns like cardboard. Here in the mountains, the Douglas fir is one of the most abundant trees around, followed by cedar, alder, maple, some spruce. But the fir is everywhere. It's a heavy tree, especially when compared to cedar. It is an excellent firewood, puts out a lot of BTUs. So whenever I find fir, I can always appreciate it. There's also the occasional pine tree, too. And hemlocks, of course. The fir, though, is the go-to firewood around here. Unless you buy it at the Mini Mart down the road. And in that case, it is alder because the people that handle the firewood that sell it to the Mini Mart like the ease of splitting alder. So now that the log is smaller in size and cut down, it's pretty easy to roll. I'm probably not going to need this lift jack for the next few cuts after this because I can just roll the log easy. Oop, see, there it came off of the lift. One thing I didn't like about this. Uh, granted, I was on the side of the road. Here I am tossing it aside. I'm just going to roll this the old-fashioned way. This log is short enough, and also by rolling it manually... I'll be able to see if there's anything on the bottom. That is a major disadvantage of using the lift PV, is that you can't really get a good look of what is under the log, and in a lot of cases, that's where your rocks are going to be, unless you crawl under there and look. So in this case, I'm just going to finish this log off by bucking it and rolling it to the other side. So I will cut the last few rounds, leaving a few inches at the bottom of the log and moving down the log to cut the next round. And then I will end by rolling the log 180 degrees and then finishing the last bottom pieces of the buck. It'll go quick. One disadvantage of doing it this way is that I am having to lean over a little bit more instead of being able to stand up and buck. 
Again, I'm going to clean this log off just a little bit and make sure that it is free of dirt and debris to keep that chain sharp. One thing that I learned when I took my written National Park Service Chainsaw Sawyer's written test was that kickback occurs at the end of the bar. When you're using the meat of the bar closest to the power head, the chances of kickback are highly unlikely. This definitely isn't a government job though. I'm doing this on my own and just finishing up my last cut or so here. And these rounds are ready to go into the truck and back to the homestead where I will probably split them in the log splitter just to make it easy. Have you uh, been able to find free firewood? What's the best firewood haul you've had? Let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching In the Mountains, and I'll see you next time.